Hey, what is up everyone? I'm Starlord and today we're going to be talking a little bit about an interview that was conducted last month at Gamescom by Game Central with Bethesda's own Pete Hines himself. Now, if you guys don't know who Pete Hines is and you like Fallout, you probably should... I don't know, work on that, because Pete Hines is the VP of Bethesda, and he normally knows the lowdown on this company and what they're working on, all that kind of stuff, you know? And this interview is very, very... I don't know, it's, it's quite good to look at because there is a mentioning of a lot of stuff in here. In the interview, they actually mention, you know, Dishonored 2, Prey, maybe a Prey sequel, and um, Quake, and also Doom. But most importantly, they do mention Obsidian, they do mention Fallout New Orleans, and they also talk a little bit about the future of Fallout. And I just want to kind of go over it a little bit. It's pretty interesting, and I know some of you guys may not even know this information yet, so I'm very happy to bring it to to you first. Uh, so let's get into these interview questions. I am going to skip to near the end because that's where all the Fallout stuff is. So yeah. So like I said, I'm going to skip down to the end of this interview and after a lot of talking, Game Central asks, will you have another E3 showcase next year? And I don't know if you guys know, but Bethesda skipped out on quite a few E3 showcases. They really did. And unless they've got something really big to show off, they won't really go to it. And Pete Hines responds with, probably, given what I know about what we're going to have going on next year and what we're going to have to talk about, I would say that we probably have more than enough time to fill in. And again, mostly because I really continue to like the idea of being able to talk to everyone about what we're doing at the same time. So yeah, knowing what I know, I think we will probably do another one next year. Now, again, that is very interesting stuff because, let's see, talk about the first time that um, Bethesda showed up for the Fallout 3. You know, Fallout 3 was announced, I think it was around about well, four months before release, and that was absolutely insane. And at that E3 conference, they really only showed off Fallout 3, uh, sorry, Fallout 4 and Fallout Shelter. And... They mentioned a little bit else, you know, a couple of the things, but mainly that was it, and that was pretty interesting. Then the last E3 that was just passed, they talked more about Prey, and uh, Dishonored 2, Quake, and Doom, the Doom DLCs, and of course the Fallout 4 DLCs, which was Nuka World and all that kind of other stuff. And that was pretty interesting, so, you know, they must be talking about quite a lot next year, you know, it'll obviously be Dishonored 2, it will be Prey, but I'm thinking maybe a couple more, you know, they wouldn't hurt to release some information about uh, some of the other things they've got going on. We, of course, know they've got a couple of new things going on over at Bethesda now, and uh, maybe that's when we will we'll hear about them. So yeah, very interesting stuff indeed. So let's continue on through this interview. So Game Central then asks, what, a, what was this rumor about Fallout New Orleans? I saw a logo just before I came out here, but I didn't see any official comment on it. And Pete Hines responds with, We don't comment on trademarks and rumors. And then Gamescom goes, eh, Oh, so it, so it might be real? And Pete Hines goes, It's just whenever someone asks about trademarks, we don't ever say yes, that is us, or no, it's not. Whether it's real or whether it's not. And uh, Game Central then goes on to ask, ah, so it's not real, is it? I can tell, I can just tell. And uh, Pete Hines then laughs, but then the interesting part comes right here. It, uh, certainly in my kind of opinion, I think this is the interesting part of the whole situation. And uh, Game Central says, uh, but would you ever consider wo working with external developers again on a new Fallout or more established franchise? And uh, Pete says, well, we are. We're working with an external developer on Quake. And um, Game Central goes, but New Vegas was something different. The devs must have had a quite a close access to your internal studios and tech. Uh, would you ever let something like that be done again? Because I ever I felt uh, that New Vegas turns out pretty well. He says he thinks everybody felt that New Vegas turns out pretty well. And um, Pete Hines then responds with. I don't know, uh, we'll have to see. And then in the little context here, he has a slight grin. That's what it says. He, After saying that, he has a slight grin. Now, you know, obviously developers and such like to kind of tease people and stuff like that. Uh, Pete Hines is a pretty serious person sometimes, you know, he can be pretty serious. And, um, you know, we obviously don't know anything from this. You know, it could be a yes, it could be a no. He'd just be teasing us and get the hype train rolling. But um, I certainly would not 
like overrule a new Fallout being, you know, developed by Obsidian. Now, if we step back and look at Fallout 4, how well it's done on the consoles, both PlayStation and Xbox One, we cannot deny that, you know, the Fallout universe, the Fallout community has grown quite a lot. Now, that is because I think personally that when Fallout 3 came out and Fallout New Vegas, there were much bigger games on the scene such as Call of Duty 4. Now, I say bigger because people just didn't want to get off those games. They were just constantly playing that game only and they weren't really going out and buying other games. The only people really doing that was, you know, people who genuinely loved a story game or just got bored of Call of Duty, I guess. And there is no denying that the Fallout community has grown own a huge lot just because of Fallout 4. Now, of course, with a community growth becomes, you know, a whole lot of revenue. There is definitely a lot of revenue in Fallout 4 and there's no denying that and they must have a lot of money right now and they obviously know these are the kind of games that people want to play these days, you know, things have moved on. It's not all about multiplayer. People want to play a good story. They want to play a really good game and I think if they did not seize this opportunity while it is right now, I think they'd be really silly and I think personally developing another fallout so close to this one is kind of the right move I have to admit because once you gather in a community like that then it opens up for Skyrim and Elder Scrolls you know I know a lot of you guys who have played Fallout have never even played an Elder Scrolls game. I've seen the comments and that pretty much shocks me But at the same time it doesn't because you guys are gonna eventually get sucked into those universes You know whether you know it or not you are going to love the Elder Scrolls series I'm telling you right now you're going to love them um, But guys yeah, anyway, let us put this video to a wrap and um, Discuss what you think in the comment section below, you know, obviously this is all just speculation at this point again uh, But you know Pete Hines the little sneak Sneaky devil, him just kind of giving that little grin at the end, you know, hyping that fear, that a uh, train of hypeness. Um, but yeah, tell me what you guys think and uh, discuss in the comment section below. And if ever, if it did help you out on this video, if it, it was new news brought to your attention, then please remember to give it a like. And until next time, I've been Star Lord. I'll see you. What if it's not, friends? Your future may not be Chinese as secure as you think. Where will you be when the atomic bombs fall? Oh shit.